In this tutorial we will be looking at the basics of the simulator and we will be implementing and looking at some measurements for a simple DC circuit. First of all, on the left hand side you've got three tabs, the project tab, the elements tab and the layout tab. The layout tab we we'll never use, so don't bother with that at all. The most important one is the project tab. So here you can set up new schematic circuits. To do so, you can click on circuit schematics and then right click, select new schematic and then give it a name. And now on this blank canvas you can place your elements. To do so, there is more than one way. You can go to the Elements tab down here and then expand Circuit Elements. These are the only ones that you will be using. And then from here you can expand Lumped Elements. And here you can find all the passive elements that you need. And also, if you scroll down and go down to Sources, then here you will be able to find all the sources that you need, both DC and AC. However, there is an easier way to find your elements. Let's go back to the Project tab. And of course, we've got our schematic canvas still open. To get a new element in, press Ctrl L. And then you've got this window popping up, which has got a list of all the elements. Now, you can search in two ways. You can either search by name, and this is what this is set to at the moment. As you can see, this little funnel here is on the name heading which means that whatever you type into the search bar here will look uh, through the name database to find the element that you're after. For example, we know that a capacitor is called CAP, so we can just type in CAP and you can see that it's found the element that I wanted. However, some other times you may not know the name of the element that you're looking for. In this case, all you need to do is keep in the control key pressed click on the heading description. You will see that the funnel now is on the description heading. So you do this by keeping the control key pressed and clicking on the heading. Now, for example, if I'm looking for a DC voltage source, I can simply type in DC voltage and you got your voltage source there, DC VS. So to place the element, we can either click on OK or double click on the name of the element and then once it's floating around here we can simply place in it by single clicking with the left or with the right button of the mouse we can rotate it. In this case I'll keep it just upright so I'll just press the left mouse button and place it. Now of course we've placed our voltage source we need a ground reference. You can source this in two ways either you go up here at the top bar and you just click on ground and then place it like so. Or you can simply press Ctrl G and get the ground that way. In order to change any of the parameters of the element that you've placed, you've again got quite a few options. You can double click on the element and the properties will uh, open up and you can change the value here. For instance, you can change the value of your voltage source to two volts and then click on OK. However, you can also directly double click on the parameter as is shown on the schematic diagram and type in the value that you require. Remember that this is an ideal voltage source and as such it will be able to supply as much current as it is necessary depending on what load you connect to it. Of course, if you short circuit its terminals then there will be a maximum current that this will be able to supply. Uh, it will be an extremely high value, but it will be finite. So now let's put together a very simple voltage divider. Press Ctrl L again, and now we're looking for a resistor. So we start with uh, uh, RES. In the case of a resistor, and in the case of many other uh, passive elements, you will get a number of variations. Always choose the close form, the simplest form you can find, because for what you're going to be doing, this is more than sufficient. Some of them have got temperature variations embedded with them. You don't need that for now. So again, we can double click on here and then we can place the resistor like so. Also, we may want to copy uh, one of the uh, elements in the schematic to replicate it. 
So you just click on the element, you can see that it looks like it's selected, then press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V and here you go, you've got the element ready to be placed. The same rules still apply in terms of the functions of the buttons of the mouse. If you right click, you rotate it and if you left click, you place it. Now we connect our circuit together. You don't need to source a wiring tool, you just hover over the terminals of your element with the mouse and the wiring tool should appear. Then you just click and click again and you've created your connection. So hover over the terminal, click, that'll start the wire and then hover over the other term terminal and click again. So we've created our little resistive circuit, this is a voltage divider circuit. Uh, let's say that we want to set our DC voltage to 2 volts. Now, if we want to set our DC voltage to 2 volts, as I said, you can do it in two ways. You double click on the element and set it up here. Or you simply double click on the value here and type in what you want and press enter. Let's set the value of these two resistors to 50 ohms. Now it should be quite easy to work out the current. The current that will flow through the circuit depends on the overall load that your DC generator sees. Because the overall load that the generator sees is 50 plus 50, i.e. 100 ohms, we are dividing 2 volts by 100 ohms to find the current that comes out of the generator. How do we verify that? There is something extremely useful that you can do in DC circuits and that is adding annotations. Annotations will allow you to see the current and voltage for every element along the circuit. So how about we add some of those? We simply right click on the name of the schematic on the project tab. So in this case DC example, right click on that and then in the list of options that you get you've got one called add annotation and you click on that one there. Then you can pick whatever annotations you want. We'll just choose current and voltage for now. DCIA, which is the one selected at the moment, uh, you can see the description of it down here. It annotates DC input current for all elements. We want that. Make sure that this DB option is not ticked. So then we click on apply and then we can keep this window open if we want to add another annotation and we can pick a different one which is called DCVAN and you can see the description that annotates the DC voltage for all nodes. So again we apply, make sure DB is not selected and then click on OK because we're done with adding all the annotations that we wanted. Now if we click on simulate, simulate or analyze as they call it is the uh, Thunderbolt icon on the top menu. So we just click on that and you can see that here we've got the results that we expected. We have 20 milliamps flowing through the circuit, we've explained why that is, and then we have one volt which is dropped across this resistor and one volt which is dropped across this resistor. This is a potential divider, we have the same value for both resistors and hence we expect the same voltage drop across each one of them. Finally, let's take a look at the Tune tool. You can see that here there is an icon which looks like a screwdriver. Click on that just once and you can see now the screwdriver can hover over things and when you can click on them it changes into a black circle with a plus in the middle. For example, what we can tune is the value of the resistors. We can just click on that and this changes into a blue color. We can also uh, tune the value of the load resistor and this also changes into a blue color. We can even tune the value of our DC voltage source. Press the escape key to get away from this screwdriver shaped cursor. Now you're back to your normal cursor. Go up to the top menu again and then click on the slider. When you hover over this will say tune. All the values that you've made tunable should now appear in this window. So we've got R1 which is there, R2 which is there and V1 which is there. So if we now change the value of any of these by moving the slider you can see that the current and voltage changes accordingly. 
Once you've messed about with it, you can restore the original values by clicking on Restore and then Initial and everything will go back to what it was. The other thing that you can change is the range. For example, at the moment we've got a minimum of 25 and a maximum of 100 for every resistor. We can change that. We can, for example, say that R1 is a maximum of 1000 and a minimum of 10. And same thing for the voltage. We could say, well, the voltage source will be between 0.1 and 10. And again, when we move the slider up and down, now we can see uh, what happens over a wider range of values. And again, you can simply go to Restore, Initial. Now we can close the tuner. If we want to stop tuning certain variables, all we need is again, we click on the Tune tool and click on them again, and then they will no longer be tunable. Again, to get rid of this screwdriver cursor, press Escape, and then you're back to your normal cursor. The last thing that we may want to look at is an extra annotation, which is for DC power. So again, to add an annotation, you right click on the name of the schematic, and then you go to add annotation, and then there is here one that says DC PWRA, annotate DC power for all elements. You can click on apply, and then okay. Then hit simulate, and you can see now that the power now has appeared for every single element of the circuit. This concludes our tutorial on how to set up and simulate simple DC circuits with Microwave Office.